Hey guys, welcome back to iCode. I am Pallav and in this video, I will be discussing one of the most controversial design patterns that is Singleton. You would have heard people saying that Singleton is bad, you shouldn't be using it, it's a bad practice, leads to convoluted code, increases coupling, etc. Even in the system design rounds, when interviewers ask about architectures and design patterns, Singleton is often brought into the discussions to evaluate candidates' design thinking, thought process for managing dependencies and other things on those lines. So in this video, we'll see all that, starting from the concept of Singleton, what is it, how it is implemented and where it is used. Then we'll see that what's wrong with Singleton, which gives it so much hate. If it is so bad, why it is even considered as a design pattern? And towards the end of the video, we'll set some ground rules. We'll see some examples to understand that when it should be used and when should we avoid it? So let's get started. Singleton falls under the category of creational design patterns and it is one of the easiest patterns to implement. Well, is this the reason that Singleton is the most abused design patterns? Maybe. We'll analyze it in few minutes. The concept of Singleton is really simple. It says that restrict the instantiation of a class to one object. That's it. In any possible scenario, the class should not have more than one object. And the same object should be accessible across the modules for using the functionalities of the class. What we commonly refer as shared access. Now let's quickly look at the implementation part. So there are three things that should be taken care of while implementing Singleton. First, ensure that only one instance is possible. Second, how will other modules access that shared object? And third, when should this object be instantiated? So for first, restrict other classes from instantiating the object. And for this, make the constructor private. Of course, if the constructor is private, instantiation can only happen within the class. For second, that is for accessibility, don't use the private access specifier with the shared object because we want it to be accessible across the modules. And for third, there are two ways, that is early initialization and lazy initialization. So in case of early, as soon as app is loaded, instantiate the singleton. The problem with this approach is that object remains in the memory even when it is not being used. Maybe in that session, that singleton object is not used at all. So that's a downside. For lazy initialization, initialize the object only when it is needed. So the first time when it will be accessed, object will be instantiated and then it will remain alive in the memory for that complete session. This is common approach when we talk about singleton initialization. Now let's look at the code. As simple as that. A shared object, a private initializer and it's done. In Swift, static variables are lazily instantiated, so it's a lazy initialization. And if any additional setup is to be done after the initialization, that can be done inside a closure and the result of closure invocation can be assigned to a global variable. So something like this. You instantiate, perform the setup and then assign it to the shared object. Now let's see that where singleton is being used. So till now, we saw that whenever we need only one instance of a class, singleton is the way to go. So user defaults, UI application, file manager, etc. All of these are using singleton. Although design patterns are not specific to any technology or platform, but since we talk about iOS on this channel, I referred these examples. Now this shows that iOS SDK uses singleton extensively and probably that's the reason that iOS developers falls for this temptation of singleton and eventually lands up in a very terrible state. We'll discuss that after this section. So that was from iOS world and if we look for examples outside it, Singleton is used for logging, caching, thread pooling and many other places. This brings us to our next section that what's wrong with Singleton. So till now it has been good. Singleton is pretty easy to implement, perfect for the use cases where only one instance should be created, world is using it. As a wonderful argument for encouraging the use of Singleton, iOS SDK is using it extensively. So what's wrong then? Why are we saying that it is good or bad? Why people are complaining about it? Well, singleton is a double-edged sword. In fact, it has more negatives than positives. And the count of negatives is so high that people have started referring singleton as an anti-pattern. Let's dive into the interesting part. So the first one is data inconsistency. These days, almost all the applications run in multi-threaded environment and convenient use of singleton as a data store leads to data inconsistency. Later, this inconsistency makes the program non-deterministic and problems become very hard to debug. Of course, concurrent write operations can be controlled and the class can be made threat safe, but that is not how singletons should be used because they are not meant to be treated as data stores. Then comes hidden dependencies. While it is very easy to access the methods and properties of a singleton class through its shared object, 
Misusing this ease adds the hidden dependencies in the code. Instead of passing the data through initializers, methods, developers conveniently use the singleton class dot shared and that increases the coupling. Eventually the code becomes untestable. So the code in which dependencies cannot be mocked, it cannot be tested. And for writing the stubs mocking the dependencies, it is necessary that they are injected in the form of protocols and interfaces rather than residing as concrete implementation. Singleton defeats this. In my video on MVVM and dependency injection, I have discussed this in detail. You can have a look. Here's the link. Another downside of singleton is that it breaks the solid concepts. The first principle of solid that singleton breaks is single responsibility. Apart from the responsibility of business logic, singletons also maintain their life cycle, which is an extra responsibility. So management of the object creation should not be controlled within the class. Instead, some factory or builder should have been responsible for it. Apart from this, singleton also breaks the dependency inversion principle. It states that high level modules should not depend on low level details, rather both of them should depend on abstraction. With singletons, modules accessing that is the high level modules depends on the concrete implementation of singleton that is the low level one and any change in singleton reflects in those modules. So these are some of the major disadvantages of singleton and if we discuss each of them in detail, there are many other side effects. So at this point, an obvious question arises that if singleton is so bad, why was it accepted as the design pattern in the first place? Let's discuss that. So singleton is not a bad design pattern at all. The problem lies in the way it is being used or I would say misused rather. To understand this better, let's look at the history. When singleton was introduced by a gang of four in 1995, it was quite loved. Developers adopted it. And, and this happy relationship continued for more than a decade. Around 2005, the drawbacks started highlighting and people started hating it. So what changed in last two decades which offered so much hate to Singleton? Essentially four things. Size of projects, quality of projects encouraging concurrency, automation in testing, and perception towards Singleton as a data store. Well, first three are reasonable, but the fourth point has been the biggest contributor in this disruption. Developers started using Singleton as a global data store which defeated the whole concept of Singleton and things started going south. The perception of Singleton as a global variable led to hidden dependencies which in turn resulted in data inconsistency. As a side effect, unit testing became difficult, boundaries between the modules were vanished, designs were compromised and eventually people started referring Singleton as an anti-pattern. So when should you use Singleton, when should you not? Let's discuss that. Now that we got a clear understanding of how singletons can be created, what are the pros and the cons of singleton, and the question is, what qualifies as the right candidate for singletons, let's set one ground rule. Do you need exactly one instance of that class and creation of second instance can be dangerous? If the answer to this question is yes, go for it. Otherwise, for all other cases, it's convenience. And building a software is of course not a convenient job. So drop the thought of singleton, pass the data in the right way, write some extra code, inject some dependencies and enjoy your coffee. Let's look at some examples of good and bad usage of singleton. App delegate, yes, there should be only one instance of an application and hence it's the right candidate for singleton. User manager, agreed that user object is needed in almost all the modules and it is very convenient, but if it is about convenience, it's not the right candidate for singleton. Inject user object as dependency. Next, print spooler. Multiple objects accessing the hardware at the same time can lead to problems. However, if print command can be executed only through print menu, singleton can be avoided in this case too, but still, it's a good candidate for singleton. Data repository, what you are looking for is a data store and not a singleton. So that's pretty much for this video. I hope that you got an understanding of singleton. You got the idea that singleton design pattern is not bad. The way it is being misused, abused, that makes it bad. You can read all these in the article that I wrote on Singleton. I'll put the link in the description. If you like the content of this channel, you can consider subscribing. See you in the next video. Till then, happy coding and stay safe.